praise the Lord. God is good, amen? amen. Has He been good to you today? Yes. I'll guarantee He is always, He is always good to us. Don't ever think that He's not good because He is. He is always good. He's always for you and not against you. You know, oftentimes we, uh, we get off, we go our own way, we mess things up, but you know God is always waiting. He's always waiting for us to come back, to call out to Him. Amen? Mm, call out to Him. Don't neglect so great a salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, we're in our study of Hebrews. We got through the first oh, six or so verses last week there in Hebrews chapter 11. And, you know, oftentimes we, uh, we kind of glance over some things. But this is a chapter, this is a portion of Scripture that deserves some special, minute, I guess you could say, uh, attention. Because what's being revealed here in this 11th chapter, what's being shown to us and, and uh, uh, remind or, or put to our remembrance is how we are to live for the Lord. You know, we saw there in chapter 10 that it said, The just shall live by faith. The Word of God tells us that we walk by faith faith and not by sight, meaning that we walk trusting in the Lord. We don't walk based, and that walk is how we live our lives, not how we go one foot in front of the other physically walking, but how we live our lives for the Lord. We live our lives as believers, okay? We walk by faith. We walk by trust. We walk by looking to Him for everything that we have need of. That is the way that God has designed for you and I to walk. To, you know, people say, oh, I just want to live for the Lord. How do we live for the Lord? We live by faith. And oftentimes, you know, that, 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 word, that, we're just, that word faith has been taken by some in the church and it's really been, if you will, abused over the last, 30, 40, maybe 50 or so years in the church and, and it's, it's been taken to mean that faith is a uh, oh, some kind of a magic word or magic talisman or a, uh, a magical force. Let's put it that way. You know, you, you're, we're familiar a lot with Star Wars and oh, the force be with you. See, a lot of times that's how the church in a lot of the circles, such as the Word of Faith and, and a lot of those type of circles, we, they've been taught that, that faith is like a force and that, you know, we can use that force and create our own reality in a lot of ways. You know, even they've even gone so far as to say that even the unredeemed, the unsaved can use faith and make things happen for themselves. I want to tell you this morning, folks, that's an adulteration of the Word of God. Because faith, whenever we see here in this 11th chapter, the faith that the Apostle is talking about here and, and the faith that the Holy Spirit is revealing to you and I today, it's not some kind of mystical force that's just floating around there and whenever you learn how to tap into it or meditate enough on it, that, oh, it's going to give you what you want. But this faith that the Word of God is speaking of here is a trust, it's a dependence, it's a looking to in, 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 in every situation and every circumstance that we go to, that faith that we are to walk by, that faith that the believer is to live by is a faith that is to be placed in one certain place and in, in the Lord God Almighty, in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, whenever everything comes down to it, whenever it all settles out, your faith, your trust is to be in who Jesus is and what He did for us on, on the cross. And when it is there, from that flows all the blessings of God. From 
Christ and Him crucified and our faith there flows all the blessings of God in our hearts and in our lives, church. So don't think of faith as a mystical force. That's what, how the world sees it. That, that, all that stuff comes from some Eastern religion. You know, the force be with you kind of baloney and stuff like that. That's an Eastern religious concept, if you will. But this faith that the Word of God is speaking of is a total trust and dependence. As a baby, that's about the best way I know to put it, or a young, young child, you know, they don't know anything other than to trust Mama. Whenever they're wet, they call out Mama. Whenever they're hungry, they may not say Mama, but when they cry, they're saying Mama. They're calling out. You see, we need to be in that kind of a position with our walk with the Lord that everything and anything we call out Father, Abba, Father. Lord, help me. Lord, I need you. Every hour, Lord, I need you. As we sung a lot this morning here, those, 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 those prayers put to song, we need to be singing in our hearts saying, Lord, I need you every hour. Amen. I need thee. Amen? By faith walking and trusting in Him. And we looked here, you know, we saw, and, and I just want to kind of recover for those who may not have been here or those who may not have heard last week's message, but, you know, as we see there in chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We saw there that that substance, it's a title deed. Your faith is the title deed. Your faith is what makes possible. That faith placed in Christ and Him crucified is what makes possible the reality of you receiving all that Jesus Christ has done for you at Calvary. And that faith in Christ and Him crucified, that's to be the object of our faith. You see, oftentimes we, we get things convoluted and messed up and we start putting our Faith or trust, trust and faith are the same thing. Believing and faith are the same thing. We start putting our trust in things that we're doing. We start putting our trust in maybe our church or our pastor. Ooh, don't do that. Put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Keep your trust in the Lord. Keep, don't be looking to your favorite ministry. Put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Because I want to tell you, your favorite ministry or your favorite preacher or whoever they might be, eventually they're going to say something or do something that you're going to go, huh? You're going to wonder what's going on there. Or they're just going to flat out totally fail in the sight of everything. And then where is your faith? Whenever your faith is in those kinds of things, then your faith fails because it was in the wrong object. I want to tell you the object to put your faith in that never fails is Jesus Christ, who He is and what He did for us at Calvary. And that's already a done thing. It can't fail. And Jesus Christ, because of who He is, what He's going to do won't fail. Amen? Amen. You can trust Him. You can believe Him. And see, I've said it time and time again as we've ministered over the years, the thing that God is looking for in your heart and in your life, He's looking for somebody that will just trust Him. We'll see that as we go through this this morning. He's looking for somebody who will just believe Him. Amen. Somebody who will just take Him at His word. Yes. And, and when we take God at His word... God does miraculous things. God moves in our situation. He moves in our families. He moves in our nation. If we'll just trust the Lord. Mm. Every one of these examples as we read down through this is people who trusted the Lord and God did mighty, mighty things in their lives. He did mighty things for them. He moved in ways that nobody ever thought possible. Do you know the story? They're not just stories. They're reality, yes, folks. Yes, yes, amen. Makes me think of Daniel in the lion's den. Yes. God shut the lion's mouth amen. because Daniel believed God. Yes, Even more than that. Yeah, oh, well, that could have, oh, them lions just weren't hungry. 
Them Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego. Oh, you can't tell me that fire wasn't hot. You can't tell me there was a cold spot in that fire. I ain't never seen a cold spot in a fire. Put your finger in there. It's going to get burned whether there's a cold spot or a hot spot or whatever you want to say. Put your little meter thingy on there. Oh, there's, it's, it's, it's 105 there, but it's only you know, 102 there. That's still hot. But the God who saved those three boys, those three men in that fire, they were saved by faith. Mm. We will not serve you is what they told that king. We will serve our God, whether he saves us. Who's that fourth man in the fire? I'm going to tell you whenever you, when you go through the fire, when you go through the flood, he said, I will be with you. Mm. Do you know who, what kind of God? Do you know the God that you have? Oh, my, my, my. Faith is the title deed. It's the substance. Faith is the, it's the title. It's the, the title. We talked about that last week. You've got a car. You've got a title for that car. You can drive a car. You can jump in my car all you want and drive it around. Just because you're in there driving, don't make it yours. You didn't pay for it. I wish you would have. <laughs> but that title doesn't have your name on there. It's got mine on there. Mine and my wife's. It don't have my daughter's name on it. It isn't hers. She can drive it. But it's not hers. It's mine. If I want to sell it, I'll sell it. If I want to wreck it, I'll wreck it. You know what I'm saying? I got the title. That's the substance that says it's mine. Faith is the title that says what Jesus Christ did at Calvary. He did it for you and all the benefits of Calvary belong to you. By faith, by trusting Him. Lord, I trust you. Father, I trust, I thank you. I believe that what you did for me at Calvary, you did it for me. Lord, I believe that Calvary paid the price not only to save me, to ransom me, to deliver me from sin, but Lord, it paid the price for healing. It paid the price for peace. It paid the price, Lord, that I can walk with you yeah. in the portals yeah. of glory someday. Yes. Do you believe it? Yeah. You see, the world doesn't have that. The world's religions, they don't have an assurance of faith. The world's religions have maybe if you do this, that, or the other, you walk on coals or you sleep on a bed with no pillow or no cushion or whatever. You know, they come up with all kinds of religious things. Oh, if you live as a hermit out in the, 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 the desert for 10 years, you're guaranteed. No, you're not. Amen. That's right. You see, faith isn't brought about by works. It's the other way around, James will say. Faith produces works because I believe, therefore I act. Because I believe, therefore I do. I don't do to be, I do because I am. Amen. You get that? The believer doesn't do to be. We don't do the things. We don't do the work of the... We don't do what's right to be right. We do what's right because we are right. Yes. Mm. We believe. We trust Him. Now I put a star note on verse 1 that I didn't have on there last week. I want to read this. It says, Faith being the title deed, that that gives salvation to the sinner and the benefits of the cross to the believer shows just how important that faith is in God's dealing with mankind. Understand this. Faith is of the utmost importance in God's dealing with you and I. It is at the pinnacle. It is the foundation of all His dealings with us and our dealings with Him, really. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him, it says here. Faith placed in who He is and what He's done in Jesus Christ. You see, 
like I said, faith must have an object. That object must be Christ and Him crucified. No other object. You see, that's something we've lost in the church today. We're thinking faith, we, you know, we've let that word of faith stuff come in with its, 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 its mysticism and its force and whatever it might be. But faith is the substance. Faith in Christ and Him crucified is what God's looking for. Faith in anything else doesn't please God, folks. Let me finish reading this. As well, okay, faith being the title deed, what gives salvation to the sinner and the benefits of the cross to the believer shows just how important that faith is in God's dealings with mankind. And as well, how imperative it is that our faith be in the correct object. Today's church, we throw around faith as just another thing, but in the mind of God, faith is everything. Faith in the right object of Christ and the cross gives to the believer all things, whereas divided faith or misplaced faith brings many problems in our lives. Faith in Christ and the cross allows the Holy Spirit to do His work in us, on us, and through us. Otherwise, and faith otherwise, and he is frustrated and unable to work in our lives as he desires. Faith in Christ and Him crucified. We're speaking there of the law of the Spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. That's what allows and makes possible the Holy Spirit to do His work in your life. He's not going to do His work whenever your faith is placed in something else. Like I said in, in, in that little note, that frustrates, that hinders, that binds, that restrains. You can bind, you can hinder, you can frustrate the Holy Spirit in your life by the, where the, what the object of your faith is. That and that alone is what holds Him back. That and that alone is what keeps the Holy Spirit from operating in your life, on you, and through you. Amen? So that's why it's so imperative. What is imperative? It's important. That means it's very, very important. It's very, very necessary. It's an imperative. It's, 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 it's absolutely needed. It's the only thing. That is what you must have. Our faith must rest in what God has done through Christ at Calvary for the Holy Spirit to work. Do you want anybody here want the Holy Spirit working in their life? Does anybody in here want Him working on them? Yes. Yeah, we need Him working on us, folks. Work on me, Lord. Search me and know me. But we need that. Why is the church? I mean, I hear all that, oh, it's okay to drink. Next it's going to be, oh, it's okay to smoke pot. And, oh, it's okay to gamble. You can go, you can be a Christian and go to gamble. I'm going to tell you what, folks, if the Holy Spirit's working in your life, you're not going to be saying those things. You're not going to be believing those things. You're not going to want to drink. You're not going to want to gamble. You're not going to want to do those things that this world does. But so many in the church today, they don't see it as anything of a big deal whenever they go gambling or drinking or doing whatever it is that they do that's like the world because their faith is not resting in Christ and Him crucified and therefore the Holy Spirit is not moving in their lives. Unfortunately, it's that way for the majority of the church today. That's why we got a world today. That's why we've got a nation today that's gone off in the direction that they have, that they can't even tell the difference between a boy and a girl. Amen. Mm, it's your fault, church, because we haven't been grounded in the faith. We've been looking to something else. And therefore... The Holy Spirit's not convicting. Oh, yes, He convicts. Oh, yes, He tells us what's right. He tells us, go here, don't go there. He speaks to your heart and says, my son, my brother, whatever. He said, that is wrong. Don't go that way. Oh, but we don't want to hear that in the church today. We want to find our own way. Make your own way. I'm just going to find my own way, Dad. Baloney! God has shown us the right way. Walk ye in it! Mm. You 
you see how messed up we get when the object, boy, the devil's been good at, at, at diverting the object of faith in the church. Oh, if you just give so much money, wrong object of faith, folks. Right. If Oh, if you just go do this and that and the other, wrong object of faith. You see, when the object is right, we'll be doing the giving. We'll be doing the doing. But not to be, but because we are. Right. Mm. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4, by faith Abel offered unto God. See, we're getting down to the nitty gritty now. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. This is the same way as it was for Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Abel believed God. He offered the sacrifice that God had established and by it he gained the, 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 the what does it say? He, he gained the uh, witness that he was righteous. We could say for Abel the same as we say for Abraham that he believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Abel believed God so therefore Abel offered up the sacrifice that God had designed, that God had established there in the garden. Abel offered up that sacrifice which was the right sacrifice to God. That sacrifice that was a representation of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You see, Abel's faith Abel's faith was in the word of God that he said that he would send a redeemer and that he would give himself and that this sacrifice was a type of that redeemer. So therefore Abel followed suit and offered the right sacrifice by faith. The blood of that little goat, that, that firstling of his flock, the blood of that little animal was just that animal's blood. But it's what it represented that brought about the righteousness for Abel. Hmm. Cain's offering was that of the works of his hands. That's what the majority of you and I offer today. The works of our hands. What we can do. Our own strength, our own ability. It ain't nothing in God's eyes. You wouldn't have it if He hadn't given it to you anyway. Right. Mm. You see, and we tend, oh, because I planted those seeds and I tilled that ground. And my weed puller pulled the weeds. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I pulled them weeds myself. I kept them from sucking the life out of my fruits and veggies and whatever. You know? Oh, I, 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 me, me, me. You see, that's what Cain's offering was all about, was what he did. Ain't I somebody? Ain't I precious in your sight, God? See what I did? How many times today we do the same thing, though? Maybe not with fruits and vegetables, but with other things. The fruit of the labor of our hands. Oh, God, I'm righteous because I give so much money to the church. You know, we got a big hang-up with money in the church. We're too much of a hang-up, I think. Because really, it becomes the end-all to be-all. And, you know, we think, don't you know that God's able to take care of you even without money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Just look at the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness for 40 years. God gave them everything they needed. Did they pay anybody for it? Did the Assyrians come and say, oh, here you go, guys. Give us a little bit of that gold you got from Egypt and we'll give you some of this quail and we'll give you some of this. Oh, and we got these things full of water. God didn't provide that way for them, did he? God made water to flow out of a rock. God made food to be on the ground every all they had. All, boy, I wish all I had to do was go out and pick up enough for the day. Hmm. But see, that's, what, that's all they had. Just believe God and go out in the morning and pick up what you need for the day. 
You see, God didn't use any other means but a miracle every day. That water was a miracle every day. And still they harden their hearts. How many miracles every day do we have to see before we finally say, Oh, Lord, please forgive me. Mm. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. A more excellent, mm, that sacrifice of that lamb, the firstling of his flock, because it was a representation of Christ. A more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his... God testifying of his gift. Boy, I tell you what, it's one thing for some guy to say something, but for God to testify. Mm. And by it being dead, yet speaks. We covered that some last week. He is still speaking today of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Enoch. This is where we ended last week. By faith, Enoch. Anybody remember who Enoch was? He was before the flood. I think he was uh, the grandpa or some kind of relation to Noah or something. But by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. What's that translated? He was raptured, folks. He was caught away by faith. Enoch's faith in God the Father and in the sacrifice and and what God had established because Enoch believed. God translated him. God raptured him out before the flood was to take place. They couldn't find Enoch anywhere. They looked high and they looked low and they said, Enoch, where are you? And he didn't answer because he wasn't there no more. Enoch, the first person ever raptured off this earth by faith. That tells me today, church, that if we keep our faith in who Christ is and what he did for us at Calvary, we got a day coming whenever the eastern sky is going to open up and we who are alive, the dead in Christ will rise. And then we who are alive shall be caught up together with them. Mm. And it ain't going to come because you went to certain, certain church. And because you did this, that, or the other. It's going to only come as you place your faith in who He is and what He's done. Those whose faith is in Christ, they're looking. They're looking for Him. And to them He shall appear. Amen. Mm. You know, the majority of these churches, oh, there's not going to be a rapture, or oh, it's going to be a mid-trib, or an after the tribulation, blah, 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 blah. They come up with all this stuff because they don't want to believe. Oh, we're going to have to go through some. We've got to be purified. They don't believe that the blood of Jesus Christ is enough to yeah. cleanse us from all yeah. sin, to purify us. I don't need tribulation. I got enough tribulation now. If that don't fix me, hey, what's coming ain't happening. I ain't going to do it. You see, only the blood cleanses and purifies. And faith in that blood. Ooh. Why is it so difficult? Because we all think we're something. We think we're the hot dog. We think we're the one. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to help God out a little bit. We ain't helping. God don't need your help. God's already provided. He's already done what needed to be done. He doesn't need your help. If He needed your help, He wouldn't be God. Mm. What did Abraham say when he went up to that mountain with Isaac? God will provide Himself a sacrifice. He's already provided. From before the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ foreordained to be slain from the foundation of the world. Mm, Before God created, before He spoke the worlds into existence, He knew where you would be right now. He knew the word that you would be hearing. 
He knew that you needed a Savior. You don't need, you didn't need a psychologist. You didn't need a financial planner. You didn't need some guru to teach you how to sit there and go home, home, home and meditate or something. You needed a Savior because you were lost and dead in your trespasses and sin. You were alienated from Him. But thanks be to God that Jesus Christ came and died on that cross of Calvary and spilled out His blood for us and by faith we receive all the benefits of Calvary. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, by faith Enoch was raptured. I like that word better on there. That he should not see death Ooh, and was not found because God had translated, God had raptured him for before his rapture, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Hmm. Who do you think that testimony was to? It wasn't to other men. It wasn't from other men. How would another man know if you were pleasing to God or not? That testimony came from God. That God was pleased. Well done, thou good and faithful. Mm. Don't forget those words, folks. Those were the words of Christ. Well done, thou good and faithful. Not prosperous, not successful, not hardworking. Oh, good, you're a good hard worker. Come on into heaven. Ain't going to work. Ain't going to get you there. Faith. Mm. Faith is what God's looking for. Trust. And that faith being in Christ and Him. It's not, it's not wrong to say in the Word. In God. In Christ. It's all Christ is the Word. Amen. Need proof of that? John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word what? Was God. Not a God. Sorry, Jehovah Witnesses. Not a. There's not more than one. There's only one God the Father. Amen. Hmm. Boy, we could go into the Trinity on that one. We'll save that for some other time then. Hmm. That he pleased God. Is that what you want? You see, that, that tells us there too. God's watching. God sees, what's he watching? He's, is he watching your actions? Yeah, he sees your actions. But more than anything, he sees what the motivation for your action is. He sees what's in your heart. Mm. You see, we can fool men. We can fool the pastor. We can fool the deacon board. We can fool any, anybody and everybody out there, but you can't fool God. He sees what's on your heart. He sees the reason for why you do what you do. If that reason is faith, that pleases Him. Faith in Christ and Him crucified, that pleases Because of what Jesus did for me, Lord, I give my all to you. Like that song we kind of sung this morning. We pour out ourselves for it, even though it's nowhere near adequate. I'm going to tell you, it don't matter how much you pour yourself out, you're never going to pay God back, and you need to have that understanding. I pour myself out. If you want to look at it, I give of myself because He gave for me. I'm not trying to earn anything because I can't earn anything from Him. You can't do enough that God says, Oh, okay, come on in. You can't be good enough, church. God's looking for where you're trusting. He's looking for what you're believing. He's looking, are you going to trust in the sacrifice that I have provided? And if we're trusting in that, like I said, it's going to come out in works. But God knows the heart. Be careful because a lot of times we start thinking, oh, because I'm, so, looky what I, Mr. Goody, I did this. We're easily tripped up. We're easily led astray by our own self-righteousness. Hmm. What is self-righteousness? Because they believed in themselves to be righteous by the works that they did. That's self righteous. Yeah, all our righteousness is as filthy rags. That means God looks at him and says, You need some washing, Buck. Hmm. 
Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. We ain't getting very far, are we? Because God had translated him before his translation. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible. Anybody need a definition of impossible? Impossible. Without power. The word is adunatos, dunamis, being powerful. The A in front of it, negating it, meaning powerless. Without faith, we are powerless. Mm. We don't have the strength. We, it's inability. We don't have the ability to please Him. Faith. Faith in Christ and Him crucified as the object of our faith. That is the only... Uh, get this. Understand this this morning, church. The only faith that pleases God is faith placed in the sacrifice He provided in Christ. Nowhere else. No other faith. And that faith, that faith in that sacrifice avails to you everything that Christ paid for in His sacrifice. Everything in the, it's all in the atonement. Everything for life and living. They ask that question, is healing in the atonement? Is this in the atonement? Is that whatever it might be? Yes! Everything for life and godliness through Him. Amen. By Him. In Him. In what Christ did for us at Calvary. He did it at, He did it there. That's why He said, it's finished. His work of redemption, of atoning, was finished at Calvary. The Holy Spirit's work just begun. You see, that's where we kind of mess things up, where we kind of get things convoluted. Because some people will say, oh, He didn't do it all at Calvary. That He didn't do everything in the atonement. That everything wasn't provided at Calvary. Yes, it was. It is finished. Everything for redemption was provided at Calvary. And redemption covers everything for life, Amen. for you and I. Sozo is, is, is where we get saved from. It means everything. Everything was provided, but just because it was provided, just because it was paid for, doesn't mean that we've yet to receive some of it. And you see, that's what faith does. Faith allows us to receive. Faith in that sacrifice makes it possible that we can receive everything that Christ paid for. And who is it that superintends? Who is it that uh, oversees when and how and where we receive those things but the Holy Spirit? As our faith resides in who Jesus is and what He did for us on the cross, we have available to us every benefit of Calvary, the Holy Spirit, as our faith rests in Christ and Him crucified, has the legal right. God doesn't work outside the law. His law, the law of the Spirit. As our faith rests in Christ and Him crucified, the Holy Spirit then has the legal right to go to work. He goes to work. Like I said, Jesus finished it at Calvary. The work of the Holy Spirit in us, on us, through us, only just begun at Calvary. Hmm. The Holy Spirit goes to work as our faith remains in Christ, making real to us all the benefits of Calvary. Did I lose anybody? Mm. Do we get that? That's why it's so impaired. That's why this 11th chapter is so important in our walk with the Lord. It's so imperative that we understand. If we just get this, if we just understand that it's all by, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's all by faith. And who He is and what He is. It's all by trusting. Don't, don't get 
mixed. Sometimes faith becomes something of a, ooh, ooh, you know, kind of, trust, believe. Don't get lost there. Do you believe that Jesus paid it all at Calvary? Do you trust that He paid it? Then why do we go about thinking we got to earn something? Did you earn your birthday present? If you had a birthday? No, it was given to you because somebody loved you. The whole concept of Santa Claus, that's about the dumbest thing. Checking his list, he's checking it twice, finding out who's naughty and nice. You know, the naughty ones get the lump of coal, the nice ones get a gift. You talk about Antichrist. Santa Claus is probably about the biggest, most Antichrist thing there could be because it goes against the Word of God. Sorry, didn't mean to get after Santa, but that's... We can celebrate Christmas and not celebrate Santa. Amen? But it, it's just the concept. You see, everything we have is available because of Calvary. All we got to do is say, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. You know, teach me. And that's what the Holy Spirit will do. He'll, he'll bring things to your... He'll bring things along to teach you or to show you those areas of your life for you may not be trusting the Lord. Why do we get in messes? Brother Curtis has said something. Curtis Hutchison, he said something back at camp meeting that if we're... If our faith is placed properly in Christ or but something to this effect, with faith properly placed in Christ and Him crucified, we're not going to sin. Do you get that? Whenever I'm trusting in Jesus... I'm not going to be looking for something else. We sin when it, because we're looking to something else. And we need the Holy Spirit to show us those things in our life that we're looking to and placing our faith in. Ever be so small, place, placing just that little bit of faith in those things and not in Christ. Jesus, as our example, He said, I don't do except that. I, don't, I do nothing except what my Father tells me to do. I don't say anything except my Father tell me to say it. Amen. That's the demonstration. That is the, the, the uh, 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 example of faith that He wants in our life, that God's looking for in you and I. That's the level of maturity, if you will, of growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, growing in Him is to grow and say, Lord, I'm trusting you today Amen. for absolute. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking another stand. That doesn't mean that we stand there and say, okay, God, tell me where to go. No, we walk by faith, yeah. trusting God that where we go, He goes with us. Yes, he's leading and He's got. Abraham walked by faith whenever God would tell him, go to that land. We're going to see it here. Let's just go over there. By faith. Okay, we'll, start, we'll talk about Noah first, and then we'll go to Abraham. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, we're going to talk about that in just a minute, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which the ark didn't condemn Noah's faith. By the which, that's speaking of Noah's faith by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Mm, there we have it again. Noah believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Do you believe? Are you taking God at his word? God's word said he was to send the Messiah. He sent the Messiah. Jesus Christ died on the... Noah didn't see it. Abraham didn't see it. But yet they took God at His word and they believed Him at His word. Do you take Him at His word today, church? I know I, I, we got a problem with the word. That's why we got to have contracts. And we got to have contracts for contracts and contracts for contracts for contracts. And they all got to be signed. And still they don't mean nothing. Used to a man could shake another man's hand and say, I'm there with you, buddy. Call on me. Not anymore. But with God. 
Oh, covenant. What's a covenant? It's an agreement. Testament. It's an agreement. In the Old Testament days, whenever two parties would make a covenant, would make an agreement, would make a treaty, what was the one thing that was common in all of it? There would be the shedding of blood of a sacrificial animal. And the, the, the significance of that was if I renege on my agreement to you, whoever you might be, let it be to me as it has been to this animal that I would be cut asunder in my blood spill. That's how serious the keeping of a man's word to another man was at the, in that day. Amen. We got nothing like that. We, oh my goodness. But see, God said, oh, when he made covenant at Calvary and he spilt the blood of Jesus Christ, no man took his life. He laid it down. No man spilt his blood. Jesus freely laid down his life and spilled his blood for that means that covenant cannot be broken because it was made in the blood of Jesus Christ there can never be we saw it here in Hebrews a while back there can never be another sacrifice if we negate the sacrifice of Christ if we turn away from that covenant and that sacrifice there is no remission of sins Amen. There's nothing to take sin away. There's nothing to restore us back to that place and position that God created man to have with Him except for that blood shed by Jesus Christ. And your faith in that blood is what God's looking for to please Him. Mm. Mm. It's rained many times since that blood was shed. But still it remains. It remains to wash away every sin. Oh my. Do you believe it? Washes away everything that stands between you and your heavenly Father. That blood. Oh, and makes you white as snow so that you can be, be able to stand in His presence. Whew. What a mighty God we serve. Yes. What a loving Father that he would give all and all he would ask of you is believe me take me at my word and in doing that oh my if all he did was say believe me for your salvation your get out of hell free card if you, however you want to call it believe me for that if that's all God did great and mighty is our God oh but it didn't stop there like I said earlier, everything for life and godliness. Amen. All that he created man to have, Jesus Christ paid for at Calvary. It's available to us. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things, being warned of God, God told him something. God spoke to Noah and told him something. Of things not, yet, not seen as yet, moved with fear. Now that moved with fear, a lot of times we think of fear and Ooh, God's going to burn me. Oh, I better do it because God's going to burn everything, you know, flood everything, and and I got I got to do it because you know, fear. No, He ain't given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. You see, fear there would be is, is kind of a, a a poor translation, but it means to revere. That word there means to reverence, to respect, because He respected the word of the Lord, because He believed. God's word then Noah went into action mm. if you believe you're going to behave you're going to act amen faith without works is dead mm. Mm. don't tell me you got faith if you ain't moved speak that faith to live that faith in the face okay so Noah took God at his word that what he was telling him was true okay he took him at his word without faith okay by faith Noah 
being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, moved with reverence, moved with respect, from hearing that word of God and believing that word of God, he prepared, he went into action, he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. We all know the story. The accounts, let's just put it that way, is not a story. Stories are fairy tales. This isn't no fairy tale. This is the account of what took place in Noah's life. He prepared the ark. A hundred years, I think. Is it a hundred years? I think it's what it took to build the ark. Huh? 120, something like that. It took a long time. Noah and them, boy, he had some help. But 120 years, still, Noah kept believing. Brother Ford, how old are you? How old are you? Yeah. 70. We find it hard to go 70 years without wavering in our faith sometimes. Do we not? It don't, it don't say that, oh, Noah worked you know, for about five years and he got tired of it and he said, well, maybe it ain't happening and then he rested and then God had to remind him. Noah kept going for a hundred years or more believing God. There is not... It, I, I don't remember reading anything in, in the account there that God spoke to Noah more than once. Hmm. Hmm. How many times you got to tell your kid clean the room? Right. How many times your wife got to say, the yard needs mowed, sign them papers, <laughs> whatever it might be. You know, but Noah, he believed for 120 years he kept building. He kept working. We, we're not going to live 120 years, folks. No, I don't either. <laughs> But if we did, would we still be believing? Or would we get to that 100-year mark and say, I don't know if there's that much to this Christianity thing or not. Mm. That's a testimony right there of faith, folks. 120 years. Noah being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world. Mm. your faith is a testament Noah's faith was a testament to the world around him he did not quit and give up he didn't stop trusting the Lord but he kept right on putting his faith into action every peg or nail or hole he drilled whatever it was it took to build every brush of the pitch stuff they had to put on it to waterproof it every bit of it was a testimony to the world around him, his faith put into action, testified to the world around him of what God had said. Amen. The world hates you because of your faith. Amen. They don't hate you because you do this good thing or that good thing. They, they say, oh, we do those good things and we don't believe. Well, la ta dee da it ain't doing you no good. You know, but we do those things because we believe. Amen. And that is a testimony and it brings condemnation. Why does he believe? Look how long he's been building that ark. He's been saying for a hundred years it's going to rain and flood the earth. God told him that and it hadn't happened yet, but he's still building that boat. They made fun of him. They ridiculed him. But the rain came. And it rained and it rained. And, and sooner before long, they were all saying, let us in. Who shut that door? God shut that door. Mm. Mm. See, they believed when it started raining. We walk by faith and not by sight. You see, whenever they it started raining, then they started believing. God said, mm, don't think so, folks. And he shut the door. God's going to shut the door. The door is going to be shut. The ark's a building right now. 
but the door is fixing to be shut. And then the calamity is going to come. You want to be in the ark. How do we remain in? How do we get in? How do we remain in? Ooh. Ooh. Remain in? Oh, I'm in the ark. I'm up on deck. I'm walking around. Oh, but I'm kind of getting tired of things, so I'm going to jump over. <laughs> jump ship. What do we say about who jumped, who, who jumped ship when things look bad? The rats jump ship when things start looking bad or when things don't go quite as we thought they should. Keep the faith. Keep trusting. Because pretty soon the door is going to close. The flood, so to speak, is going to come. There's coming a time on this world, Jesus said, that is never, it is never seen before. Whether you say this world is 6,000 years old or this world is however many in the beginning years old, it is never seen what's coming upon it in the near future. Who do you believe? Get in the ark. Be trusting in the Lord. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham. Ooh, mm-mm. Abraham, they call him the father of the faith. He wasn't the first. Justification by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out. I want to tell you today, church, you've been called to come out. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and I will be your father. Come out, church. That means you don't stay in. That means you don't participate in. That means you don't go to the casinos. You don't go to the bars. You don't do the things that this world does. You come out from among them and be ye separate. Noah came out. He built that ark and by his faith he came out and it condemned that world as you say no. I will not do those things. I will not participate in that. Because my heavenly Father has called me out of those things. That condemns the world around you. Because there's got to be something different. Come out, guys. Stay out. Don't participate. You're a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Mm, You're a people of God. Live like it. It's evident by how you live if you, where your faith is. Amen. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, listen, which he should receive, which he, he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not even knowing where he was going. Abraham. God said leave your father and your mother. Leave your father's house. Leave this country. Go to a place that I will God just said go that way. Go to a place that I will show you. And Abraham believed God. However God spoke to him. However God spoke to Enoch. However God spoke to Noah. They believed God. My goodness, folks, do you not get it? God is speaking to you today in a way that He has never... He didn't, He's speaking to you today in a way He didn't speak to Abraham and to Noah and to Enoch. You got His written word today whereby God is speaking to you and still we won't believe? These men didn't even have this. They had the word and that word... What was it from the time that Abraham, God called him out? It was years and years and years before God would speak to him about something else again. God called him out. Abraham went out. He left, went to that land. And in that land, God said, I'm going to give you a son. 
But Abraham was, it says he was as good as dead in his body. Sarah's womb, she had been barren. They didn't have no kids at all. She was barren. Read on down. By faith, God spoke the word. They believed the word. My God, he's speaking his word. Do you believe it today? Hmm. Thick heads. Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for him, do you know Abraham never, the only thing Abraham ever got in the promised land was a cave to bury him in? But he still believed God. Amen. He believed God that that land was going to be his. He believed God that he was going to give him a son. He believed God that through his lineage would come the Redeemer. He believed God. He took God at His word. Take God at His word today, church. Believe Him today, church. Trust Him today. That's what He's looking for. That's the testimony He wants from you. He wants to see in you. Do you believe Him? By faith He sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. That's a picture of our walk in this world. He sojourned in the land of promises in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Oh, wow, wait a minute. He passed that on to his boys, his son and his grandson, that faith. Mm, what are we passing on? Are we passing that faith on to our children and our grandchildren? Are we telling them and are we demonstrating in our lives that we believe God? Mm. Mm, we're going to stop right there because we're getting late. Maybe we need to think about that this week. What are we passing on? When things get difficult and things go upside down, you know, the way we, they go, they, they go the way we don't want them to go. Do we go cuckoo? Do we blow our top? Or do we trust the Lord? We get a bad report from the doctor? Do we get all tore up inside? Or do we say, Lord, my life is in your hands. We get fired from the job. Lord, you see, Sometimes we got our faith in things we don't realize. Our job, our health, our bank account. Sometimes the Lord has to pull those things out from under us to get our attention and to get us to call us out. <laughs> you know, when we was kids, we were going to call out the boy down the street. Come on out here, I'm going to give you some of this calling him out you see sometimes God's got to call us out you trusted in your little house over there your mama once you get out of there see sometimes we need to get out be pulled out from under we need those things pulled out from under us that we're trusting in so that we trust in the Lord by faith Told you there was a lot here. We didn't get real far past where we stopped last week. But be encouraged. Amen. Be encouraged to keep trust in the Lord. By faith. Walk by faith. Faith in Christ and Him crucified. Faith is not the force be with you. That's baloney. Faith is the substance, the title deed all that we hope for, of all that we have in Christ. Faith says that's yours. Everything he did at Calvary, it's yours. Baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's yours. Amen. Healing, it's yours. Peace, it's yours. Whatever you have need of, 
Jesus paid for it. Here it is. How do we receive? By faith. Amen. Let's stand. Put your trust in Him today. Ask Him to show you those things where you're not trusting Him. And walk this week with your faith in Christ and Him crucified. No matter what comes about, you crash the car, somebody breaks in the house, whatever. You don't see how you're going to get this month's bills paid. Trust the Lord. Believe Him, take Him at His word that He has promised to give you all things for life and godliness in Christ, through Christ, by Christ, by what Jesus did for us on that cross. The object of our faith is Christ and Him crucified and nothing, absolutely nothing else. Make that a determination, if you will, in your heart. I ain't turning to nothing else. I'm trusting in nothing else. Lord, help me. Help me see things that I might be trusting in that I don't even really realize. But I want to trust in you. Amen. If you need prayer this morning, come in faith believing. And God's going to move in your heart and in your life as they sing this song. The blessings of the Lord, they are mine, they're all mine, all mine. The blessings of the Lord, they are mine. Do you believe it? They're yours in Christ by faith. Trust Him this week for whatever the need for whatever's going on. He's faithful. He was faithful to go to that cross. Huh. Don't you think he'll be faithful to give you what came from him going to the cross? He didn't hold back even his own son. He didn't hold back spilling his own blood. He's not going to hold back anything else. Believing for it, church. Amen? Amen.